I'm Brenda. I'm Kay, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Putting Your Garden to Bed seminar. And if you have any questions during this, don't hesitate to stop us. Ask us a question. We'll take care of it for you. We're going to start off by going over the perennials, what to do in your garden, what not to do this time of year, and maybe some a few little maintenance things you need to check out. Kay's then going to take it over and go over some bulbs, forcing them, planting them, and all kinds of good things. So the first thing we want to start off with is what not to cut back in your garden this time of year. Do not cut this back. And it's mainly a lot of the herbs. And one of them is rosemary. If any of you are fortunate enough to be able to overwinter this rosemary outside, sometimes the past few winters have been pretty mild. So it's really good up against some stonework where it kind of retains some heat on the south side of your house. You do not want to cut this back. But no, now, if you want to cut some to use it for cooking, you can, right? Right. You're mm -hmm. talking about shearing it back. Right, shearing it back. And the same thing with lavender. You do not want to cut this back until, and when we say late spring, I'm, or late winter, I'm talking about maybe mid-April to the end of April. No matter how great it looks and it's starting to turn green and doing all kinds of things at end of March, 1st of April, wait to cut it back because we're still going to get a frost and there's still going to be some issues with it. So what you can do, and what I recommend doing this time of year, is trimming off the flower blossoms. You know, just kind of go down in there, get the flower blossoms off. And then you can take this in, put it in a guest bath if you want. I like to put them under my car seat. You know, for those of you that have dogs. That's why your car smells so good. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then also I've carried a lot of plants, so they're, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of, lot of sm there's a lot of smells working in my car. going on <laughs> That's right. So feel free to trim off your blossoms, cut them off, bring them inside the house, but do not cut this back. I mean, it looks really good right now. Later in the season, it's going to get a little rough looking, kind of turn grayish, lose some of its leaves, but do not cut that back until mid to late April. Right. And when you do cut these back, I'm going to say one more here. This is a Santalina. And for those of you that don't know about this plant, it's a right. great one. It has a tremendous fragrance on it. It's a little yellow button flower. I use this a lot to plant in between rock walls because the nice thing, it likes it really dry. Mm -hmm. right? And it also stays evergreen and kind of cascades down a little bit. Right? So do not cut this back. Uh, and you can take it in there and you can cram it between some boulders that type of thing. All these plants here like excellent drainage. What is that? I'm sorry, is that on here? Yeah, Santa Santa Lina. Lina. Santa Lina. It is. It's the last one. Last one on, on, on the right hand oh, road. Thank you. Uh -huh. okay. Santa Lina. Um, so like I said, this is great around the rocks in, in rock walls. It comes in great too. It's a great plant. And the best way to plant these, if, you, if you're considering planting these next season, even the lavender, get them on a slope. Put them yeah. on a slope, put them on a hot slope. They like it hot and dry. And they do not like fertilizer, so really lean soil. You don't have to put a whole lot of, um, you don't want to put any mushroom compost in there. It needs to be loose, so it needs to probably have some soil bark in there to keep the soil loose if you have heavy clay soil. Mm -hmm. But keep it on a slope like that, and don't pack a lot of mulch around it because that's going to retain too much water in it. So mm -hmm. hot, sunny bank is the best place for lavender and rosemary, and everybody wants lavender. Mm -hmm. I and mean, you don't know how many people um, ask for lavender to plant it. So don't cut it back until, and if you, because what happens is by cutting it back, when you go to cut it back in the spring, you want to go maybe about three inches above the last green. So you're going all the way down, you see a little bit of green, go above that maybe a couple inches and cut above that. And you'll see a couple leaf, leaf sets coming out. Just cut on, on top of that. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. So, in the springtime, when you get when it's time to cut it back, you want to come all the way down and go up about three inches above that green, and then cut there. You're going to cut off this whole top, all right? And if it's looking good, take it inside, use it for, you know, for um, sachets, sa yeah, sachets, putting it under your truck, <laughs> under your pillow if you're having trouble sleeping. And do feel when it's too woody. Because, and the reason that you do that is because it gets really woody if you don't. For those of you that have had lavender before, or rosemary, or even the sage, when you cut, if you don't cut it back, it, it becomes very woody at the base where there's no green down there. And you can't cut into that. You can't recover from there. You always have to cut above a green. And that's just like a butterfly bush. Mm -hmm. Always have to cut above a green. Does everybody know what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Makes sense. Okay. So does that go the same for rosemary? 
Yes. yes. So, I mean, you're probably, you're going to cut some of it off in the springtime. Don't worry about it. Use it. Okay. Right? Use it. But it's going to keep it bushy and it will, it'll revive itself. It'll get bushier for you and it'll be a much happier plant for years to come. Okay. Right? So, in a pot. Pardon? In a pot, it does fine. In your pot? Is no, it, yeah. It did it. Mine's in a pot. Well, yeah. so well keep it, yeah, kind of keep it protected. It you know, like if you have a deck, like yeah. I would use, if I had this in a container, I would put it under a deck, Eve. You yeah. know, if you have that, that the southern, the, that western, yeah. southwestern exposure underneath the deck, Eve, so it's not getting the snow, it's not getting the rain, and then I'd water it periodically. So that way I can control the water. The big thing around here, there's so many hardy perennials, but a lot of them have a huff, a tar, a huff, a, Excuse me. Easy for you to say. I know. <laughs> a tough time surviving because it gets too wet here. Yeah. You know, with all the rain that we have, yeah. and you know, the, we don't have that much snow cover, but we get a lot of rain, yeah. and it just never dries out because it stays cool. Yeah. So that's the big thing with those. The next one not to cut back is the autumn fern, tassel fern, Christmas fern. All those are evergreen ferns. Um, they usually stay looking pretty good especially if you have a little bit of protection. But every once in a while, maybe January, February, you'll get some brown out on them, some crispy edges, that type of thing. Still wait to cut them back, all right? Don't trim that off, that's protecting the crown. So what you wanna do later in the season, mid to late April, you can go in there, once you start seeing the new growth coming out, the little fiddleheads, you can go in there and trim it back if it needs to be trimmed back. And just remember, when you're trimming it back, it's going to make it bushier and fuller. You know, especially some autumn ferns when you buy might just kind of be like this and not very wide. Well, in the springtime, if you trim them back, that's going to make it bushier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pruning promotes growth. Yeah, so but just don't wait. Be afraid to prune. Yeah. But just wait to do it. Don't do this in December, January. Even if it's looking bad, you got hit by a lot of rain or snow. Do not cut it back because it's protecting that crown. Wait till it starts because what'll happen. In January, it might warm up, and all of a sudden, stuff starts emerging. Well, if there's nothing protecting it, it's going to get hit by the next frost. Mm -hmm. But with dead growth, we can take that off. No. no. Don't take no. it at the bottom. Don't no. take it now. Don't take it. It's okay. all going to protect that crown. Okay. It's all protecting that plant. Take the wind off of it. Does anybody have the red hot poker plant? Okay. You do? I don't have one. But all right, so that's a really grassy plant. Very grassy. She has everything. <laughs> I'm an addict. <laughs> so it's a really grassy plant, grassy foliage, and then it has the spikes that come up about the end of June. Yeah. Sort of red. Sometimes they're popsicle red, yellow, orange. That's called the poker plant. You know, Nyphonia, I think is the, the Nyphonia. So what you want to do with that, you can cut off the stalks, which probably most of you have already done if you have it. But take that grass and you want to keep it there because that's protecting the crown. You can trim it a little bit, but kind of keep the bulk of it in that center. All right. Does anybody else over here have it? Okay. So I'll just talk to you. <laughs> keep the bulk of that in the center. Okay. You can trim it around, you know, if you need to neaten it up a little bit and stuff. All right. So those are the basic ones to cut back. Also, if you have any grasses, you know, the big, the big switch grasses and the pompous grasses and all those. You're supposed to wait until the spring to cut those back, you know, usually late February. What you can do is you can cut off the seed heads if you want. Mm -hmm. What happens a lot of times with the snow and the rain that just kind of starts flopping and looks doesn't look so great, you can cut off those seed heads if you want, but do not trim the grassy part down because that's protecting the crown. You don't want it to start shooting off new growth before it's time. Mm -hmm. Is everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. The... Um, Late Usually late February. You have to watch the weather. I mean, to me, this is one of the hardest zones because, mm. you know, January can be 70, 75 degrees for two weeks, you know, and then all of a sudden February comes and here comes the ice storm, the snow, and mm -hmm. it just comes back and forth. I mean, I think last year February was really warm. February was nice. Everything was starting to bud up and then March came mm -hmm. and usually it's like the second week of March, first week of March, we get a 25, 28 degree temperature and that really kills a lot. And we even had frost at Mother's Day this year up into oh. May. Oh my gosh, it was a cold spring. Right. Yeah. So a lot. So some of her blooming. We have one here. Well, it's early. Did, is it? Did you just buy it, or has it been in the ground? 
Yeah, my yeah. Lot, that gets a blooming. Right, right. and there's a lot, I mean, there's some rhododendrons blooming. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's like it's crazy. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. The other thing with the Latin roses, the Halliburus, if any of you have these, this is a great plant. Mm -hmm. The uh, yeah. commercial kind, 25% off. 25% yeah. off. <laughs> All our great time to buy your perennials yeah. now. This gets to be a little more expensive for a perennial, so right now is a great time to buy them. But this is an evergreen plant. It loves the shade or morning sun. It can take some afternoon sun in the winter time, but come summertime, it likes cool. It likes to keep its roots cool. And it's a it's a hard plant to grow. Like for us, we've tried to grow it. We've had some success with it, but it doesn't like it really wet and it doesn't like it really hot. So it's almost a plant that has to be grown this time of year to get ready for next spring, as opposed to starting it in the middle of the summer. It's a little more difficult. So what'll happen with your Latin roses, Helleborus, is the mature leaves, the older leaves will lie flat down on the ground, right? As a, as the season progresses, January into February, they'll start laying on the ground flat, the older, bigger leaves. Leave them there until maybe about the end of February, 1st of March, depending on the weather, then you're gonna cut those off. Only the ones that are lying flat on the ground. And the reason that you're waiting is because it's protecting that crown. And by the time of mid to late February, the new growth is gonna be coming up in the center and they're gonna have buds of flowers starting to come up. We wanna cut those older leaves off because these are pretty notorious for getting aphids. Uh, yeah. And I, right, so it's a good reason to cut them off sooner. It doesn't, they really won't get on the plant that much, but you get the leaves off. And the reason they get the aphids is because it's all congested and it's wet and it's been staying damp in there. So don't be afraid to go around that edge, maybe toward the end of February, and cut off the older leaves, put them in a, um, a trash bag, and do not compost them. Anything that has fungus on it or insects on it, you do not want to throw in your compost pile or near other plants. Try to get those leaves up off the ground because that will spread. So, um, Brenda, on those, you come in with about a couple of the other plants. You have to be careful because there might be another cold period. But with those, we can go ahead and remove some of those leaves. Right, the because they're going to start blooming. I mean, they're pretty frost resistant. I mean, this is a plant. I mean, it really doesn't get hit by the frost. Okay. What you're trying, the tender new growth will. But what you're trying to do is get get those old leaves out of there before the aphids start right. accumulating. So in this case, and then, it's so I usually what I do is I usually cut mine off, uh -huh. and then I'll spray the rest with a hose. You know, okay. spray the plant itself with a hose, and that'll wash a lot of them off too. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to put insecticide on them or anything like that. But the bees do love this plant. Oh my gosh, they're all over our plants out there right now. Are they? The, um, I remember last uh, in the spring when we bring some of these in blooming. The bees, the bees are all over. Yeah, them. they love those early blooming. Mm -hmm. So those are those are some of the things. There's probably some other. All right. So the Russian sage. Who's got a question? What, what kind of is that? Hello, boy. That's Joseph. Thank you. Right. Oh, Joseph. Oh, Joseph. So is there just one type of hello, boy? No. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. There's oh tons of varieties. There's a lot of hybrids out yeah. there. There's a lot of hybrids out there too. Yeah. The Orientalis to me uh -huh. is the one that has a um, the different leaf. It's a uh, much it's sort of a bigger leaf uh -huh. mm -hmm. and it's a different color of green it's not as dark it's uh, yeah, a little it's bit lighter, lighter green yeah. um the flowers are usually sort of a pinkish color uh -huh. have the pink That's tone have, to yeah. me that one seeds a and lot it reseeds. It does. Oh, yeah. it, and yeah. you have to look I mean, it's a great one to start with because it'll reseed uh -huh. and you have to know what the baby looks like and leave it there for a couple years because the baby almost looks like a um a seed that the that the um, bird drops it just has two leaves coming off on it but um it's a great plant if you have that flower and you have that you can sprinkle that around to get more of those so the hybrids don't seed as much as the orientalis which is typical with hybrids, hybrids. and yes. a lot of times when hybrids seed in any plant it doesn't it does come back to the true. original parent right uh so on this one you said that one's the pollinator bird oh the, the bees oh, love yeah. this yeah, the bees love how the board they yeah, love them what whatever variety say. you have now they that love them the Jose Jose joseph joseph okay and then the one other one that a lot of people have in their garden is Russian sage. Everybody have a little bit of Russian sage, yeah, hot, dry, wispy. Yeah. The, um, with that one, you want to leave also. And that one gets a little ratty looking. Um, 
does everyone know what Russian sage is? Yeah. Have I have a pineapple sage. Is that treated the same? Mm. The pineapple sage probably won't come back. Sometimes okay. it reseeds. Okay. Sometimes okay. it reseeds, but it doesn't, it doesn't come back from good, the right? original plant. It's <laughs> yeah. blooming okay. right now, probably. Mine is. Yes, yeah, it's Mine hasn't bloom, but yeah. the leaves are dying. It's, so. We treat it as an annual. Every once in a while, okay. it'll come back. Okay. Or, or, or reseed. I don't know if it reseeds. So the Russian sage, you want to treat just like we talked about the lavender and the rosemary. In the springtime, mid to late April, go all the way down, go above a couple greens and cut it back because it will start greening up. Mm -hmm. But don't don't be worried about cutting all that green off. Just go right down a couple inches off the base where it's green and cut that. Always remember you have to cut into green. Right? Have to cut try, always remember to cut above a green. Mm -hmm. Right. And that'll get bushier and also and fill out much better for you as opposed to being leggy. So that's kind of what not to cut back. A few things that we like to Leave for the birds, if you like your birds, or if you like the seeds, anything to seed. One of them, probably the number one, are cone flowers. Echinacea comes in a lot of different colors. So the seed heads are really interesting. The birds will spread these for you. Everyone loves more cone flowers. This is a, usually the original is like the little purple flower, like your shirt, the purple petals and stuff. So you can leave this for the birds, and it's fun to watch the, what I was reading something about the goldfinches they are vegetarians. Mm. They're one of the only birds that are vegetarians. Mm. Oh. Isn't that interesting? That is I forgot interesting. to mention that. I yeah. read that a, a while ago. So they're vegetarians, so they love these seed heads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. They're kind of like, the, maybe they're related to the voles. We just keep them above ground, eat That's those little right. seeds, keep That's them crazy. happy. You know, they yeah. ate my zinnias to death. Yeah. So, cone flowers, this is a Stochesia aster, right? Stochesia aster. You can sprinkle these seeds around. We plant. I have a lot of seeds in here. We're gonna have so many flowers. I know. We're gonna. We're gonna overpower. This is great for presents, you guys. If y'all have gardeners, make get little packets and put your seeds, label them, stocking stuffers. And the nice thing about this Stokes aster, this one usually gets about 15 inches tall, big, big flower on it. Um, usually about uh, end of June. The nice thing about this one is that it's evergreen. And not very many perennials have evergreen basil foliage, so this will stay evergreen. And it does spread a little bit. It's great for edging a plant, um, a walkway, or a little garden bed. So I do like this one. It's pretty this easy. This is a perennial? This yep. is a perennial, 25% <laughs> <laughs> And this is, this is next year's crop. Yes. That's why this is blooming a little late. We have some of them over there right now that are in full bloom. So it's next year's crop. There's three different varieties, but it's looking good. Very cold hardy, so you don't have to worry about planting it this time of year. Uh, another one that the birds do enjoy, this one uh, is just about out of its seeds, is the phlox, the garden phlox. Right. Oh, yeah. So the garden phlox, once again, this is, some of your phlox might not look this green. That's because <laughs> this is this year's, uh, next year's crop. So this was planted up in June, or July, and a plug about that big. Mm -hmm. so, um, so the birds do like this. You can keep it on there. You can also, um, most of the time, this spreads by runners. Don't you find that flock does that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's one that's getting dug out this year, right? Mm -hmm. everywhere. Right. And then also the bee bomb. Oh, yeah. This is the bee bomb, all right? And what else do we have? Garden sedum, mm -hmm. autumn joy, autumn fire, neon. The nice thing about this one, um, I was telling the class earlier, is that I had a customer that had a lot of these and they liked them cut down. So I would cut them all down, and of course it was a dry season so the foliage didn't look quite as bad as this. <laughs> but I would put them all in a container next to a, a bird bath or a bird feeder, mm -hmm. and the birds really enjoyed the seed heads, plus it was some winter interest. That's a neat idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It just gets some winter interest. Yeah. You know, something you when you look out your side. window, instead of seeing just brown stuff, you have you know, a little bit of structure there. Mm -hmm. So the other thing about the sedums is you can make a million sedums out of this. Mm -hmm. You could just keep cutting this, pull off the bottom leaves, mm -hmm. get rid of the flower, and stick this in the soil. Oh. And just stick this in the soil. Mm -hmm. They're very mm -hmm. easy. I would say if you put, you would probably have maybe like a 90% success rate. Because this is what's going to come up on it in the springtime. And this is what we call basil foliage. You see the little 
florets at the base. Oh, that's yeah. what they call basil foliage. And that's what'll shoot off of that little crown that you cut and you put in the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are so easy. I know. But you're not supposed right. to trim that till spring. Spring. If, right. right, if you want to leave the seed heads on there. You can trim it. You can trim it now and be safe start. with it. Yeah. Oh, okay. You can trim it now. Yeah. You can trim it now. A lot of what we're talking about right now is what um, what the birds might like, okay. which you can self seed. The things you can't trim until spring are right here. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. okay. But but right. know that anything you can leave everything the way it is right now and wait till spring to do some trimming if you want to. It's all what you like and what the, how how the weather's progressing you know if you want to it's a nice day you want to go trim up a few things you can do that with the perennials but a lot of people like to leave their stuff until spring mm -hmm. just depends on you know what your situation is and your time frame mm -hmm. plants are pretty forgiving mine aren't yeah. mine are, I'm mine are not we call you job security they're a little more forgiving they're a little more forgiving than what I have with me okay so so with <laughs> So, so with the bee bomb, <laughs> try to get through my session. All right, so with the bee bomb, <laughs> so you can see bee bomb tends to get powdery mildew. Mm -hmm. We do have a lot, of, we, we did grow a lot of varieties that don't get the powdery mildew, and that's like a little white dusting on the leaves, and that's pretty, pretty common around here this time of year. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this summer, with all the rain that we've had, Bee balm and garden flocks are notorious for getting it. I will say that all through the season, we had a lot of good garden flocks that they uh, have bred to be uh, less susceptible to powdery mildew and it's really done well. We had one a couple years ago and we had it in our frame and we had a flood and everything was crammed together because we were throwing it on tables and they stayed together for a long time and all the rain and they never got powdery mildew on them. Which, was, That's amazing. Which was amazing. Yeah. That was the um, the white mini. Hmm. Mini Pearl was her name. Mm. So this one also has some good basil foliage. I would cut that back. This I think anything that has insect issues or has powdery mildew, you should cut back this fall. Mm -hmm. You should cut it back and you just go right down to the basil foliage again. Just trim it up. And you want to make sure and pick up any of the stuff that you've done. And Put it in the in the garbage bag. Do not put it in your compost pile. So this is basil foliage. We're gonna we leave our bee balm out all winter, just like this on the table. So they don't mind the moisture. So this one can handle all the winter rains that come or the soil that doesn't dry out. So this is a great plant. The bees, the hummingbirds, everybody loves this one. What's the other name for bee balm? Monarda. Yeah. Monarda. The the other thing when you're cutting back plants. Right. You're cutting black. The Coreopsis here, some of them are hard to see. They're late to come up in the springtime. You know, you can't really, you don't really know that they're there. Right. So to help that, in case you mulch, you can go ahead and just cut, the, you know, leave a couple inches up so you know that that plant is there. Does everybody know what I mean? Instead of cutting it flush yeah. to the ground, if you know it's something that comes up late or you can't see it, don't be afraid to leave a couple inches up of the stalk. So you know it's there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to mark everything with you know the way that the wind goes around here and, yeah. and everything falls down.